Welcome to the France 24 debate. I'm Mark Owen. NATO has sent some 700 soldiers, peacekeepers, into Kosovo in the wake of the disturbances near the border with Serbia. This follows violent scenes where Serbs faced off with police. NATO peacekeepers were injured, caught in the middle uh, of the fighting, some 30 of them, uh, Italians and Hungarians. Jens Stoltenberg announcing the dispatch of the reinforcements. The NATO Secretary General says that the attacks on NATO soldiers must stop. The background of this crisis is steeped in the ethnic antagonism that's weighed on Kosovo since its independence in 2008. At the heart of the matter, perhaps, the very existence of Kosovo. The Serbs say it belongs to Serbia. The Albanians point to the fact that the United Nations, the United States, the European Union and prominent Islamic organisations have already recognised Kosovo's right to be independent. These images very much telling the story of the tension that is centred on four municipalities uh, in the north of Kosovo, near the border with Serbia. Let's bring in uh, our guests to discuss the issues. Uh, I'll introduce them uh, before we hear from them, of course. Jacques Rupnik is Director of Research at Sciences Po in Paris. Jacques is also a member of the International Commission on Kosovo. Jacques, thank you sir, very much for being with us. Uh, joining us uh, from uh, Sarajevo is Yves uh, Dutrio, former Deputy spokesperson of the French Foreign Ministry, former Deputy Permanent Representative of France to the UN, and Professor of Geopolitics at Paris Dauphine. Thank you, sir, for being with us. Joining us Hello. by... Hello to you, sir. Thank you for being... Back to you in a second. Joining us by Skype from London is Aidan Hahir. Aidan Hahir is a reader in International uh, Relations, uh, Postgraduate Director of Politics and International Relations at the School of Social Sciences at the University of Westminster. Thank you for being with us. Before I let our guests loose, let's uh, take a report to set the scene about what's happening in Kosovo. Here at France 24, Leo McGuinn with this. In the town of Zvekan in the north of Kosovo, hundreds of Serbs once again gathered in front of the town hall on Wednesday in an effort to remove an ethnically Albanian mayor who has just taken office. In response, NATO troops placed barbed wire and erected fences. It comes two days after 30 soldiers from the organisation were injured in clashes. NATO have responded by committing 700 more soldiers to bolster their forces in Kosovo. 20 kilometres away in Zubin Potok, it's a similar situation. And for many Serbs who are part of the protests, patience is beginning to wear thin. Kosovo special forces need to retreat from buildings in the north. This will make dialogue possible. At the moment, escalation is the only possible result. I don't know when the patience of Serbian people will run out. The confrontations began last week after ethnic Albanians were installed as mayors across three areas in northern Kosovo, an area populated predominantly by Serbs. The officials were appointed in local elections organised by Kosovan authorities, which were largely boycotted by the voters. Speaking in Bratislava, Kosovan PM Albin Kurti said he would consider early elections. What we can do within law and still being doing politics is at some point early elections. This is what we can do. But we cannot say that these mayors are not mayors. Officials have repeatedly warned that Serbia would not stand idle if Serbs in Kosovo come under attack. On Wednesday, Defence Minister Milos Vucevic visited troops near the Kosovan border. The country has already put its military on the highest state of alert. The Obergwin's report there ending on a very ominous note indeed. Let's bring in for the first comments Jack Rubik of Sciences Po, member of the International Commission on Kosovo. Um, the, the great fear I think everybody has is that we're on the brink of seeing another conflict uh, here in Europe. Uh, already Ukraine is happening. Yeah. What is the situation in Kosovo? What does your, your gut feeling tell you about what happens next? Well, the gut feeling is that uh, we saw it coming. There were a number of... Uh, the tension was building up, let's say. And uh, uh, we can see that uh, in that region, sometimes you need a trigger and this may be one of them, uh, which can work if the two sides are ready for confrontation. Because behind what is happening in the northern part of Kosovo, this is happening in the northern enclave, Serbian populated enclave, about 50,000 Serbs there, which actually, this is a Serbian minority in Kosovo. This is not the majority of the Serbs from Kosovo. There are Serbs in other parts of Kosovo. But there is a concentration there. And there you have the two governments, 
Pristina government, the, the, the Albanian government, which has uh, organized this election with 3% participation, 3% uh, to elect uh, 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 the mayors after the Serbs decided to boycott. And then you have the government in Belgrade, which also has its own motive in, let's say, encouraging or uh, presenting itself as a victim, the Serbs as a victim who need protection. And uh, that's why uh, mobilizing the public opinion in Serbia behind the government, because that's a government that has been recently challenged on a number of issues, especially on gun violence. There has been series of incidents. I can't develop that right now. Mm. But you have the politics of it. You have what's happening in that enclave between <laughs> Serbs, Albanians, and the way the two governments are playing this up. Indeed, there are and that could be very dangerous. There are mul indeed. multiple level levels and lots of scope for antagonism. Jack, let me just pause you for a second and bring in Yves Dutrio, who's in that Sarajevo in Bosnia. There, Yves, a former deputy spokesperson of the French Foreign Ministry, and the former deputy permanent representative of France to the UN. Yves, thanks for being with us. Um, this Thank situation. You, this I si avoid another issue, but <laughs> in, indeed, 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 it's a, a, again a very honest name which brings many images to mind. Uh, but. Sticking with Kosovo, obviously, uh, the situation as we're seeing it, um, NATO sending 700 extra troops in. Uh, it's clearly not a decision they've taken lightly. Certainly not. And as uh, Jacques Rupnik just said, uh, we have to be very cautious uh, about the possibility of an escalation. So the aim of the uh, NATO uh, uh, presence uh, is to try to calm down the two two communities. And at the same time, uh, the European Union is trying to, uh, you know, to, to, to calm down the two governments, uh, by the way, because uh, to, to settle the issue of the uh, Serb of uh, Mitrovica, uh, there was in principle an agreement sponsored by the European Union uh, regarding an assembly of municipalities, Serb municipalities in the northeast of uh, Kosovo. And th in theory, this agreement has been accepted both by the Serbs minority and by the government of Pristina. But unfortunately, uh, the uh, government of Pristina uh, is not implemented that agreement. And in particular, there is an issue regarding those this assembly of municipalities' competence uh, for, for the Serbs. And as the Serbs were uh, unhappy about that, they have uh, unfortunately decided to boycott the municipal election. And now it's absurd because only 3% of the population uh, votes. And then you have Albanese uh, mayor uh, which are supposed to be elected by only 3% of the electorate. That's pure nonsense. And uh, uh, the government of Pristina should understand that. But on the other side, the government of Belgrade should avoid uh, fueling uh, the, the situation. And as Jacques just explained, it's for domestic reasons that Belgrade is uh, trying to inflame the, the situation. But fortunately, if I may say so, <laughs> we are not at all at the stage of Ukraine, and uh, it's, the two situations cannot be uh, compared of, uh, in any way. Uh, so, by the way, NATO is on the spot uh, with a physical presence, contrary to the situation in Ukraine, obviously. Indeed. Well, that is obviously uh, reassuring news to hear from you, sir, that you don't see this escalating into uh, a wider, uh, larger conflict. But clearly, for the situation as it is on, on the ground in those four municipalities uh, where the violence is breaking out, there is, of course, cause for concern. Let's go to London. Aidan Ahir joins us there. He's a reader in international relations at the University of Westminster. Uh, thank you for joining us, sir. An election where 3% of the people turn out to vote. Uh, that, is that, can that be called an election? Yes, it's an election. Um, nobody is happy with the fact that only 3% of the population voted. The Kosovo government certainly encouraged the Serbs to take part in the elections. It's worth pausing and asking the question, why did the Serbs not take part in the election? Um, the reason being is that the most dominant Serbian party in the northern municipalities, the Serbian list, um, 
they issued a diktat that said you cannot vote, do not take part in these elections. And this party, the Serb List, uh, is a party that has well-known links to organised crime, is a, a party that is completely controlled by Belgrade in Serbia itself, um, and has intimidated the local Serbs into not taking part in these elections. It's remarkable that seven Serbs came out to vote in these elections. Uh, the UK government and many other people have noted that there was a, a pervasive climate of fear and intimidation uh, in the northern municipalities because the uh, uh, Serb list and the organised gangs um, demanded that Serbs do not take part in these elections. Now, at the end of the day, the elections took place. The government of Kosovo re recognises that the Albanian mayors who were elected do not truly represent the people on the ground. But, you know, you must observe the process of democracy. Uh, once the elections were held, then it's important to ensure that the, the process is, is um, seen to its conclusion and that these mayors are um, enabled to do their job. Now, uh, the Prime Minister, Kurti, has uh, said today that he recognises that these mayors are not necessarily representative of the people on the ground and is willing to countenance the idea of early elections. But none of that, none of those issues excuse the scenes that we saw um, in the northern municipalities where armed gangs from Serbia and based in northern Kosovo attacked um, the police and K4 troops. There, there is absolutely no basis, there's no um, uh, legitimacy behind these armed attacks. And the notion that there are two sides ready for confrontation, as, as Jack said, is simply not true. The government of Kosovo has no interest in engaging in any kind of violence or confrontation with Serbs or Serbia. The only party involved in this situation that is keen to cause disorder and violence is Serbia, as it has done for the best part now of, of, of 25 years in this region. And that's what it's aiming to do. It wants to cause disorder, not just in Kosovo, but throughout the region, in Bosnia and in Montenegro in particular as well. And we're very much in a situation here where we've got one side that is standing up for democracy, that wants to integrate into the European Union, wants to integrate into NATO, wants to observe democratic norms inside its own state, and another country that simply refuses to do that. And Serbia is the one that has repeatedly, the, the president of, of Serbia, Vucic, has repeatedly stated that he does not accept the agreement that was signed recently. It was mentioned, made of that earlier by Eve, that that agreement was, was endorsed by Kurti. He offered to sign it. Vucic refused. And in the aftermath of that agreement, he stated repeatedly on television and in various different public forums that he would not sign that agreement. So we've got one party who's willing to compromise, who's willing to sign an internationally brokered agreement, and another party that has openly refused to do that. And that party has a history of violence and is, is, is fundamentally undemocratic and a threat to, to peace and stability in the Balkans and Europe more generally. Aidan Mahir, I've got so many questions for you. I can slightly, though, hear your, your sound breaking up. So our technical team will try to look at that and improve things, and we'll come back to you as soon as we can. Let's come back to the studio. Jacques Rupnik is here, uh, Director of Research at Sciences Po, member of the International Commission uh, on Kosovo. Uh, Jack, the, there are those that say that Kosovo was too heavy-handed in trying to uh, escort the new elected officials into their roles in these municipalities, and that... In, in turn, provoke the problem. Would you agree with that? Uh, yes, and, and it's not just my opinion. This is the the opinion of the American ambassador uh, in Kosovo. This is the opinion of uh, uh, the observers there. Uh, that. Uh, um, Yes, uh, Arbin Kurti, the, the prime minister, used this opportunity. Uh, I'm not saying that he, he's the only one who has created this situation, of course. I, I did mention that both sides have their part. But uh, if you have an election where 3% of the population have voted, you will not try to enforce their taking over the municipalities. You should calm down. You should perhaps try to negotiate something. But perhaps he's not that interested in reaching a deal. Uh, I remember an interview about six months ago that Arbin Kurti uh, gave to the BBC, um, hard talk, 
mm. a very good program on, on the World Service, uh, I if I dare mention it. You, you just did, uh, on, and we allow you. And, and, <laughs> and uh, uh, he, uh, he was asked, you know, what about your relationship with Serbia? Do you think you can make progress, etc.? Well, he said, no, you know, this is not my priority. My priorities are fight against corruption, f fight against uh, unemployment, uh, uh, helping youth, etc., etc. And about number eight was the relationship with Serbia. Well, if you have a prime minister of Kosovo who thinks that relationship with Serbia is not his priority, and... Uh, um, are you saying basically it should be his priority? <laughs> yes. Okay. If you are, uh, if you are uh, uh, Kosovo, recently created a state which is not recognized by your neighbor, Serbia. <laughs> uh, you were part of Serbia. You are no, you are no, you have seceded. Fine. Uh, uh, you want to join Europe in the long run. Five EU members do not recognize Kosovo. I'm not now saying that they are right, but if you are in such situation, well, maybe your policy should be to show that you are. Um, pursuing a policy of goodwill. You mentioned that I had been a member 20 years ago of the in Independent International Commission on Kosovo, uh, chaired by uh, Judge uh, uh, Richard Goldstone, a South African constitutional mm. judge uh, with uh, distinguished uh, members of the commission, such as uh, uh, Swedish uh, Minister of Education, etc. Mm. And the one condition for us, I mean, th uh, that was very important for Kosovo uh, possible road to independence, at that time there was no independence yet, was not just because the other options seemed to us worse. Uh, you want to keep Serbian control over Kosovo? We didn't find one Albanian in Kosovo that would take that. You want to uh, uh, perpetuate the international protectorate? That would smack of neocolonialism. In fact, this is a term that Arbin Kurti, then a radical left-wing opponent, uh, 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 was using. This is neocolonialism. Do you want to partition Kosovo? This was one thing. You, you want to take this enclave in the north and, and draw a new boundary. This was a solution proposed by some. In fact, very recently, Ameri I mean, the former American President Trump, he advocated that solution, and uh, Vucic and former uh, uh, Kosovo uh, 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 President Tachi actually agreed to that solution, except that in the meantime, Tachi got indicted to the International War Crimes Tribunal that turned out to be very convenient for Europeans who didn't like this solution of partition because they feared it could create a precedent if you partition on ethnic grounds a territory of a state you have just recognized. Wouldn't that create a precedent, let's say, for, for Macedonia, where you have a, a, a Albanian population too, but quarter of the, so uh, Bosnia the, and, and Bosnia, as 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 is rightly reminded, yes, yeah, there is there is a Republika Srpska, mm -hmm. and we have actually the leader in Republika Srpska who is a secessionist, <laughs> who, who so uh, if you are in a situation where independence, we were arguing that independence was the only option, not, just, not because we were fans of creating small, unviable microstates in the Balkans. Uh, uh, no, but because we thought that all the other options were bad options, and this was the least bad, but on one condition, that uh, Kosovo independence happens with recognizing rights of the minorities, human rights, uh, 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 relations with its neighbors, etc., etc. I will not spell the whole argument, which then uh, uh, was actually, uh, I think, a substantial part of it was adopted by those who argued uh, 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 for, for Kosovo independence. So if you are the prime minister of a newly born state, which has this situation that I have just described, well, your case would be not pushing for confrontation. You would be seeking some kind of dialogue, especially as the European Union had offered a framework for that dialogue. I'm not saying that they, they are the only ones to blame. Vucic also has occasionally cooperated uh, uh, or became very difficult when he needed it for domestic reasons. Blame perhaps on both sides. Of course, this has got a long way to go before it's resolved, hasn't it, Jack? Thank you very much indeed. We've mentioned these elections. Uh, let's hear what Emmanuel Macron had to say about uh, the situation a little earlier when he was speaking in Bratislava.
We've made it very clear to the Kosovan authorities that it was a mistake to proceed with these elections in the context of virtual non-participation. And I hope that tomorrow, on the fringes of the European political community with Chancellor Schultz, as we did on the fringes of the Prague session, we will be able to see both the Kosovan president and the Serbian president together. It is very clear that Kosovo authorities bear responsibility for the current situation and there is non-compliance with an agreement that was nevertheless important and which was secured just a couple of weeks ago. So I'm anticipating what Aidan might say to this one. First we go to Yves Dutru, who is in Sarajevo. Eve, uh, Emmanuel Macron is saying the election shouldn't have been held. Too few people taking part. Yes, it's clear that uh, the key, uh, once again, should be in the hand of the European Union. I refer to that agreement a couple of months ago about uh, the statute of the municipalities in Mitrovica. Serbia is an official candidate to uh, application to, uh, to the EU. Uh, negotiation process with Serbia are going on. It's clear that uh, at the end of the day, Kosovo should be an official candidate as well. As, as Jack uh, rightly put it, the key is for normal relations between Serbia and Kosovo and recognition of Kosovo by the five remaining EU member states, which up to now have not recognized independence of Kosovo. So with the attraction of the EU, if I may say so, the carrots, of the uh, EU application, then EU has the, the, the strong hand, should have the strong hand on both Belgrade and Pristina for settling uh, uh, in a, you know, democratic manner the situation of the Serbs in Mitrovica. It's true, as uh, your, uh, uh, the, the scholar from London, I, sorry, I forgot his name, Aiden. referred to uh, refer to drug trafficking and so on, uh, sponsored by uh, uh, some people in uh, in, Bo in uh, Serbia, uh, in the region of Mitrovica. It's sure that there were some pressures pressure on the Serbs for boycotting the the election. But on the other hand, uh, I understand that uh, on this agreement on the assembly of municipalities a couple of months ago. Uh, Pristina has not accepted to, uh, the, the, to, to, uh, you know, to work on the scope of competence of this assembly of uh, municipalities. So to organize an election, if we don't know exactly what will be the competence, the power of those who would be elected, obviously it's better not to organize uh, election. First, one should have an agreement on the competence of this assembly of municipalities in Mitrovica region, then organize elections without any boycott, and, uh, and then uh, the EU with its uh, carrots could perhaps manage to, uh, you know, to, uh, to, uh, to, to decrease uh, the tension in, in the region. And by the way, there is another partner that has not uh, uh, been quoted, it's Russia, because obviously uh, I have seen some reaction from uh, the, the Kremlin uh, against the Albanese and uh, against uh, the, 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 the West, uh, generally speaking, uh, explaining that we, the West, are fueling uh, with the support of Pristina uh, uh, the situation. Uh, but uh, we don't. We should not forget uh, bad games played by uh, Russian in the region. Indeed, it is a depressingly familiar uh, catalogue of, of facts put together uh, to create some kind of distorted reality, isn't it? Uh, Eve, thank you very much indeed. Let's bring in uh, from London again, Aidan Ahir, uh, reader in international relations at the University of Westminster. Aidan, uh, hoping the sound is, is better connected to you now, because uh, I know you've got many interesting reflections and observations to make. Um, can I just start you off by uh, putting to you that uh, Albin Kurti, Prime Minister of Kosovo, was saying, you know, staged elections again. Is that a good, is that a good plan, do you think? It could be. I mean, it, it is something that demonstrates that he is willing to um, engage with the people on the ground. As I said, that there, there is, you know, uh, the way in which this has been framed in the last two or three days is, is really a, a misrepresentation of the situation. Um, the, the government of Kosovo uh, doesn't have a track record of trying to, um, you know, uh, 
impinge on the, the civil rights of the, the Serbs in, in, in any part of Kosovo. It doesn't discriminate against them. The constitution, Kosovo's constitution, contains extensive rights for um, the Serbs and other minorities in Kosovo, and they're provided with reserve seats in parliament and various other different provisions like that. So Kosovo isn't a, a hostile environment for, for, for Serbs. The, the problem in, in, in Kosovo with respect to Serbia and Kosovo is Serbia's continued claim on Kosovo and its, its you know, attempts since 1999 and again since 2008 when Kosovo declared independence to undermine the functioning of the Kosovo government. And that has taken many forms. And the, the ASM that was mentioned a couple of times, that is a means by which Belgrade will be able to exercise more control inside Kosovo. It's not actually going to help the Kosovo Serbs. It's just going to enable Belgrade, which is ruled by Vucic, who used to be Milosevic's minister for propaganda. It's going to enable hardline Serbian nationalists who are in power in Belgrade to exercise more power inside Kosovo. So this isn't a proposal that will improve the lives of some um, oppressed minority. It, it's got nothing to do with that. It's a fundamentally geopolitical move on the part of Serbia to exercise more leverage inside Kosovo and undermine the functioning of the um, Kosovo state, which is their long-term objective. You mentioned uh, Milosevic there. Obviously, it brings back echoes of, of the past, uh, which, of course, is, is not that d too distant in terms of its continued influence and what is happening in Kosovo today uh, and, and around the, the whole sort of Balkan scenario. Uh, Aidan, in terms of uh, what happens next there, uh, I mean, clearly, one of the issues, I suppose, and Jack pointed it out earlier, is that the, the, the Prime Minister of Kosovo, uh, Kurti, uh, says that it's not his priority to try to improve relations with Serbia. Is, is he wrong in that approach? No, I think he was misquoted there. I mean, it, the, the, the government in Kosovo's priority when they were elected was to deal with unemployment and corruption and various different internal issues inside in Kosovo. Um, Kosovo cannot be obsessed with Serbia. Serbia is obsessed with Kosovo. But for Kosovo to function as an independent state, it needs to work on its, its own, clearing up its own mess, if you want to think of it in those terms, and deal with internal issues. And it's all those internal issues, like corruption and unemployment, that led to mass immigration um, and led to the election of Alvin Kurti and his party. So naturally, he wanted to deal with the situ with situation on the ground inside Kosovo. But Kurti has always been very clear about the situation with Serbia, that there needs to be reciprocity. That Kosovo will recognize Serbia and Serbia will recognize Kosovo and they will move forward as two independent states. But you can't have negotiations, as has been taking place since 2008 under the auspices of the EU, between a country that is recognized as a state and also claims ownership over the other partner in those negotiations. That's fundamentally untenable. You just couldn't have that. No, France wouldn't accept that as the basis for negotiations. Uh, and in that context, Kurti has simply said, we need to be treated as equals. If we are considered to be a sovereign and independent state, then treat us as one in the course of these negotiations. And because he's taken a harder line on that than his predecessors, um, he's been condemned by various different actors in the West who would like Kosovo to go back to being this compliant non-entity that doesn't cause any trouble uh, and simply does what uh, Washington and Brussels orders it to do. And Kurti has stood up against that. And he is, it must also be remembered, he is the leader of a political party that has been the largest political party in the last three elections in Kosovo. So he has a huge popular mandate. They won over 50% of the, uh, the vote at the last election. So this is somebody who very much speaks on behalf of the people of Kosovo. Aidan, thank you for that uh, precision, because I think it's important to, to hear uh, what you just pointed out about uh, the, the relevance uh, of uh, that political voice and um, what it means. Because very often we feel that uh, politicians aren't speaking for the people, but it's interesting that you make that very clear point. Can I just add something uh, to the debate here for you, you gentlemen to re reflect on? Serbian President Vucic uh, announcing he's cancelled his two-day visit to Bratislava in order to be with what he called his people. Uh, read into that what you will. Uh, he said he visits soldiers deployed in key locations uh, this uh, Wednesday, 31st of May. He made the announcement in a video which he put online. Serbia's defence minister, Milos Vucevic, 
uh, visiting soldiers to after the country put its military on a high state of alert. Uh, that is a, usually a sign that something's going to happen, uh, isn't it, I think? Uh, sending more troops to the border than with Kosovo. So Serbia, Jack, basically echoing what NATO has done. Uh no, S Serbia is having its own agenda, and here clearly there's a lot of saber rattling, a lot of rhetoric, etc. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, yes, th this is now, as, you know, this is why one posture feeds uh, the response from from the other side. You know, you meant we just heard about Arbin Kurti. Yes, he won election, he won several elections, and his attempt to uh, clear corruption and, and, and uh, fight against unemployment, this is all excellent, of course. But Kurti is also a nationalist. Kurti is a left-wing nationalist. I had met him. He's a very smart man, very articulate but a very articulate proponent of Albanian nationalism. And you know what? He's for greater Albania. He's for uniting Kosovo with Albania. So, uh, uh, so you have one nationalist coming from the left, facing in Belgrade a nationalist, ultra-nationalist, coming from the right. <laughs> they are now playing uh, uh, this confrontation, and I think that from a Kosovo point of view, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving for a side uh, for a moment Serbia. From a Kosovo point of view, the uh, uh, long-term goal should be to create a situation with its neighbors, including with Serbia, which builds enough of a relationship that it becomes plausible for the two countries to move closer to the EU. There is no way either of them can move closer to the EU if they have the unresolved dispute. You cannot take into the EU a country that is uh, in a confrontation and whose borders are not recognized. This would be the case for Kosovo. So he's working against the, uh, uh, um, I would say, the long-term goal. Uh, same thing for Serbia. Vucic himself has said on a couple of occasions, we should not live in the past, we should abandon the myth of the past, basically saying, we, our heart bleeds, but Kosovo is lost. Uh, we, we will have to come to terms with that. He, he more or less said that. But of course, uh, if there is nobody to talk to uh, and, and, and make any progress, and by that I mean also the European Union, you would have to have tangible progress in the accession process to the European Union. So if you have progress, you then revert for very convenient domestic political reasons. You are in trouble at home. Well, you know, <laughs> revive the Kosovo uh, question and you have suddenly national unity. Yeah, the opposition, everybody will be supporting a tough stance. So, uh, so it, I hope this will come now soon. It's that Machiavellian you're saying. Some of that, it's, it's really a political decision it, it to do this. It is a political decision. And I would say, in the long run, the strategy should be that the European Union uh, uh, tells both sides, you are coming into the EU together at the same time. The condition for that accession would be that Serbia recognizes Kosovo. The condition would be that Kosovo really guarantees, uh, for instance, autonomy of Serbian municipalities or whatever agreement you can, you can reach. That would be the condition you joining together and Serbia will only recognize Kosovo, not before. Only on the day it will be joining into the EU. Yves Duccio, yeah, go ahead, agree, go ahead. Uh, I fully agree with uh, Jacques, uh, uh, but uh, unfortunately we have a bad precedent. Uh, when we negotiate with Turkey and Cyprus, uh, we yeah. said that the Turks, uh, once you will recognize the unity of uh, the Cyprus Republic, uh, then Cyprus and Turkey would join the EU. But unfortunately, we have accepted Cyprus, but divided. Uh, so the, the scheme didn't work. But I hope that in the case of Serbia and Kosovo, as Jacques said, it is uh, uh, reachable, uh, totally reachable. And Kosovo could, uh, tot uh, could accept a special statute for uh, Mitrovica, Mitrovica. Uh, as uh, you know, in France, for instance, we have a special statute for Corsica. Uh, uh, we have special statute for uh, New Caledonia or uh, French Polynesia. So you can have uh, a sovereign state, independent state, 
with special statute for certain regions. So it's totally uh, reachable. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, uh, patient uh, compromise. Uh, and uh, I think we were not that far uh, last March, I think, with this assembly of municipality. And it's unfortunate that both sides uh, are not able to agree upon on the flesh, the contents to be given to the competence of these municipalities. And I hope that uh, Macron and the others uh, would uh, speak with the two sides for calming down the situation. It's not the interest of Belgrade, it's not the interest of Pristina to let that issue, uh, you know, uh, uh, in a state of instability, by the way, for decades, because uh, the, the issue of Mitrovica has been discussed, as Jacques said, I think it's seen, uh, since uh, 2005 uh, uh, with uh, the, uh, the um, Foreign Affairs rep uh, High Representative for Foreign Affairs of the EU. At first, it was Mrs. Ashton, I remember, so uh, around 2008. And uh, now it's Borrell uh, in charge of the FI. And uh, I, I, hope, I hope reason will, will prevail. Eve, thank you very much indeed. Aidan here in London. I hope you were following that one uh, closely. Uh, Reader, international relations at the University of Westminster. Uh, what I'm left with still is the fact that we have two sides here that can't reconcile, it seems. They can't put anything aside in order to move towards some common ground. And I'm wondering whether the, the whole um, aftermath of the Kosovo War, which ended in 1999, basically set all this up. See, the, the, the Rombuier Accords, criticised by uh, senior diplomats at the time as being basically terrible. I think it was Kissinger who said that. Uh, it, it, did this basically set up to fail the state of Kosovo? Um, no, I mean, I, I, I fundamentally disagree with this both sides discourse. Um, you know, I, I'm not naive to think that Alvin Kurti or the Albanians in Kosovo are, are some kind of superhumans that have never done anything wrong. But, but really, to draw a kind of um, parallel between Kosovo's behaviour and Serbia's behaviour is, is, is just untenable. You know, it'd be nice to think that, that Serbia since 1999 has, has moved on from, from the, 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 the discourse and the rhetoric and the actions that, that characterise Milosevic era, but unfortunately it hasn't. It, it, you know, briefly you had Zoran Djindjic elected in, in Serbia and that seemed like a, a ray of hope, but, but they killed him. The Serbian nationalists killed him and they've come back into power. They killed um, a prominent uh, a Serb politician in the north of Kosovo, um, Oliver Ivanovic, in 2018, again because he wanted to reach out and, and be less belligerent towards the, um, the Albanian community. He died as well. So it, it's not a two sides at their throats, typical Balkans kind of thing. It, it, this is very much a situation where there is one party causing instability here. And not just in Kosovo, as I said, in, in Montenegro uh, and in Bosnia. Um, the, the, the agreement that, that was, the so-called agreement that was brokered by Joseph Borrell um, with respect to, the, to Kosovo and Serbia, I, I must reiterate, Kurti said, I will sign this now. Vucic said, I will not sign it. Okay, so it's not the case that these two guys need to come together and, and, and you know, fulfill their agreement. The ASM that was proposed for Kosovo was found to be unconstitutional by Kosovo's constitutional court. Kurti has also said that he is willing to countenance some form of ASM. One of the uh, um, contributors mentioned Corsica in France. You know, something like that could be achievable, but that is not what the ASM, as proposed in 2013, um, suggests. It's fundamentally different to the arrangement that you'd have in Corsica or arrangements for minority groups in, in, in Belgium or in, in, you know, the, 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 the Germans in Denmark or something like that. It's far, far more invasive. And if Kosovo was to agree to that, Kosovo as a state would be rendered un, ungovernable, it would be untenable, which is precisely what Vucic wants. And ultimately, like I said before, when, when looking at the two parties to this conflict, there's one party that is recognised internationally for having trampled upon human rights and press freedom in the last 10 years, for having aligned itself with Russia over the situation in Ukraine, and for having caused violent instability throughout the region, and that is Serbia. 
Kosovo is, is not the problem in the situation, in the same way that the, 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 the Bosnian Muslims are not the problem uh, in, in Bosnia and Herzegovina. We, we must be clear as to who is the issue here. And, you know, describing Kurti as a, as a left-wing nationalist, I mean, that's a, that's a gross exaggeration. You know, he, you can't compare Kurti and his nationalism to that of Vucic. You know, Kurti has never called for anybody to be, to be killed. Vucic has. Kurti has never been part of a state apparatus involved in genocide. And Vucic has. Right? And Vucic hasn't changed his ways. Vucic has become more belligerent, more aggressive in the last five years. And really, looking at this objectively, there's one side that's standing up for democracy, that wants to join the European Union, that wants to join NATO, that is trying to um, you know, instill democratic norms in this country. And there's another country that is hell-bent on causing disorder and destruction in Kosovo and throughout the region. And the choice really is very, very clear. We're getting towards our final comments. Aidan, I'm staying with you just for one remark here. Do you have, very quickly, uh, in your head now, a possibility to get out of this crisis? What is the one thing that has to happen? I mean, clearly Vucic is there. There is a certain uh, mindset in Serbia. Uh, you can't change that, can you? No, I think it should be made very clear to Serbia that it cannot join the European Union until it agrees to recognize Kosovo. Um, it was mentioned earlier that there is also the problem with the five non-recognizers inside the European Union. If there's an agreement between Serbia and Kosovo, then the five non-recognizers will uh, recognize Kosovo as well. An independent Kosovo that's recognized regionally and recognized by the European Union is the solution to the ongoing instability. And, and unfortunately, it's down to, 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 to Vucic to, to see sense on this. And much more pressure should be put on Vucic and Belgrade from Brussels and Washington um, to, to, to finally put to bed the, the, the Kosovo problem that has, has plagued Serbia for centuries. And one thinks of all the uh, potential and the people whose lives are being held back at the same time. It is, it is a nightmare situation, isn't it? Aidan, they're here in London. Thank you. Let's go to Yves Dutrio for possibly his final contribution to uh, Yves, sure, former think... Deputy Permanent Representative of France at the UN. Sir, go ahead. In uh, Sarajevo. Yes, uh, I think what uh, uh, our uh, in last interlocutor said is very right. We should uh, make a connection between the application of Serbia to the EU and the recognition by Serbia of the independence of Kosovo. It's clear. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that it's on the textbooks of the uh, EU negotiators uh, with, uh, with uh, Serbia. Serbia will not enter inside the EU without recognition of Kosovo. Uh, we have, and then Kosovo should be a member of the EU. Uh, and uh, provided the 27 member states of the EU would recognize the dependency of uh, Kosovo. There is uh, no other long-term prospect uh, than this one. So I think on this one, at least, uh, we uh, agree, uh, the three of us, uh, and I will uh, avoid to, uh, uh, to, uh, to uh, consider uh, one uh, leader as a uh, pure nationalistic uh, or not, we have not chosen our interlocutors that have been elected in Serbia and in Kosovo. So we have to work with them uh, and we have only to plead over them for settling this matter, which is very uh, symbolic perhaps for the Serbs, but uh, they have to recognize that it's a very sm uh, small territory of, uh, as it was said, 12,000 Serbs only at the northeast of Kosovo. So it's not such a big deal, but I know that sometimes the past, the, the, the history, uh, uh, are still, uh, you know, uh, a stumbling block uh, for uh, setting peace uh, today. But uh, it's, it's, you know, uh, as a diplomat, former diplomat, uh, I think it's too bad that after nearly 20 years of, uh, of negotiation, we are still there about uh, Mitrovica. By the way, yeah. I paid a visit when I was ambassador to OSC to Mitrovica. And I remember it was not possible for the, the Kosovar uh, delegation to cross the river 
so uh, I hope that now the Kosovar police can cross the river, but apparently it's not possible, or, and they are attacked by, uh, by Serb militants. So we are back to square one, and I hope that uh, in the near future, it will be possible to resume the negotiation on that issue on the basis of the proposals of the EU Commission. Yves Dutchu, thank you very much indeed. We need to leave it there. I'm sorry, Jacques, we're out of time. for. We can't take your final comment, but we, I think sorry, we've got a great Jacques. sense of, of what you thought uh, throughout this debate. So thanks to Jacques Rupnik, thank you to Yves Dutchu, and thank you to Aidan here joining us from London. Thanks to you all for watching uh, this programme. Stay with us here on France 24.